get to my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide, Jody and Hazy on Nova. Let's just pass around the big bowl. There you go, news reader. Abby, your turn, Joe. Ah, a good stuff. Mm-hmm. This is our big giant coffee is that bowl. Tasty, because I had a really nice dinner last night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you sort go, producer like a Emily. Thai red curry aftertaste, mm. but anyway. <laughs> yeah. We have this big giant um, coffee bowl which we pass around first thing in the morning. It's the first thing that we all drink together. Yeah. It's real sort of, it brings us together. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. called the communal coffee mm. cup. What, the communal coffee cup. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. What the experts are saying is that you should definitely not drink coffee for the first thing that you do when you wake up. You definitely should not do that. Why okay. not? Well, um, you should drink water the first thing you do when you get up because our body is made up of, what, 80% water and you've had eight, nine hours without it. Oh, good on you there, Dr. Oh, well, I don't mean to be a smart ass about it. I'm and just saying if that makes sense, does it not? It also actually, helps with the 50,000 wines you had the night before as well. Yeah, that's anyway. true. Um, actually, sweetie, um, they've warned <laughs> against having a coffee first thing in the morning as it can hijack our body's natural rhythm prompting us to have that afternoon crash. And boy, oh boy, I'm good at a 3 p.m. crash. Mm. Sometimes my eyes get so heavy at 3 o'clock in the afternoon I have to staple them up. Do you? That's probably because the first thing that I have in the morning is a coffee. I don't think twice. I think about coffee when I go to bed and I start thinking about it when I wake up at about 3 a.m. and it's the first thing that enters my mouth. Okay. You, you know that sounds like addiction. It's definitely addiction because mm. last time I didn't have a coffee, by 3 o'clock I had a chronic headache. And then I had a coffee and it went away. That, Could, my friends, is genuine addiction. Yeah. Can we just go back? When have you ever woken up at 3 a.m.? What do you mean? <laughs> you get in here at 4.30 and you have a shower in here. Mm. So you can't tell me that you're rolling out of bed at 3 o'clock no, and no, it no. takes you an hour and a half to get ready. No, no, as in I wake up at 3 o'clock. I'll probably wake up for a second. I dead set have a thought of coffee and then I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> So you, this is fascinating to me because my mother does this. Mum will have a coffee before she goes to bed. Mm. Mm. Do you, is that no, something you would do? do? She'll have an instant. She'll have a Macona yeah, before she hits the. My ex is gorgeous brew, by the way. My ex would have three or four <laughs> coffees at night. Yeah, I'm right. like, you're a literal psychopath. Yeah, well, that, that makes a lot that of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so your body produces a thing called adenosine mm-hmm. and also cortisol, yep. and basically one is an upper and one is a downer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and one starts really aggressively. It's the upper, and then it goes down as you get to, uh, towards the end of the day, mm. and cortisol keeps you up. Yeah. So when you have coffee, it absolutely smashes and fights them. And then all of a sudden, they're in different places. And like, what's going on? What's this caffeine hit? We didn't invite you to the party. We're going to absolutely fight each other. So are you saying that if I give up coffee, I'd probably solve all of my issues? Yes. As in the moody issues? <laughs> Sad mixed emotions. Jack Carlson, the man behind the legendary democracy, <laughs> manifest <laughs> meme has died at the age of 82. <laughs> Who's familiar with this? Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Have a look at the headlock here. <laughs> See that chap over there? <laughs> Get your hand off my penis! Yes. This is the bloke who got me on the penis before. What is the charge? <laughs> Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? There it is. So Mr Carlson became famous among Australian households after footage of his 91 arrest outside the China Sea restaurant in Brisbane went viral. He's a bit of a fraudster too. Mm. Yeah. Very, very colourful history. See, I hadn't heard of this guy until you kept playing that clip on repeat over and over in the studio. What, you didn't see? You didn't hear this back in no, the day? No, I've never I, heard of him. Wow. Did you know how many times I heard this and I didn't realise that it was real? This because is... when you hear it, it sounds like a skit. It sounds like someone doing a play or something. Yeah. It's actually genuinely real. This is like a pop culture moment in history. Mm. People talk about iconic Australian lines and iconic Australian things. This yeah. is it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, 100%. Ap- apologies. I'm in... across most things, just not this. <laughs> in saying that, though, there, there was talk that this was a conspiracy. That it was all set up. So you are right in saying that people, yeah. Oh. Because it just went, uh, he just went viral again because it was 20 years Mm. since that particular moment, wasn't it? Anyway, he will be immortalised via music. Mm. And that is the good thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, ladies, um, (laughs) soak your ears into this, the techno version. This is Democracy (laughs) Manifest. Democracy Manifest. Yes. Gentlemen, uh, this is the Democracy Manifest. Drop the beat. I like this as well. The Oasis version. Democracy Manifest. Have a look at the head. Lucky. Ready, get to it, get to it. 
See that chap over there? He's get your hand off my penis. <laughs> <laughs> the first one reminds me, like, imagine being the Bunnings rave that Peking oh, yeah. Duck are going to oh, do, yeah, and yeah. they're playing that. They You'd just that. be going off. Everyone would be off their face. Yeah. Um, this might be my favourite version. Traditionally, I don't like heavy metal, mm. but when it's got a nice little Jack Carlson flavour to it, really, really tickles you in nice areas. You ready? Get your hand, penis. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, ladies, say it with me. Get your hand, get your hand at my penis. <laughs> You're a child. <laughs> so, hang on a second. Hang Where, are For hands, goodness sake. Where are your hands, Where are your hands? Abby, please. <laughs> get your hand off my penis. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to China, shall we? We always do. I love taking this little trip. More specifically, Taiwan where a man accidentally swallowed an AirPod while sleeping and then discovered it was beeping inside his stomach when he used his iPhone tracking feature after waking up. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Medics at the K.O. Siang Hospital administered a laxative and the AirPod naturally passed through his body. Oh. Yeah. Surprisingly, after washing and drying it, he found that it still functioned and the battery was at 41%. Oh, no, <laughs> you've got you've to just sort of sit down mm. and work out whether you want to use those uh, AirPods ever again. Well, you should know, because yeah. remember that time when you swallowed your AirPod? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a day that was. Oh, it's incredible, because I've got the audio from that time oh. when an AirPod went down your esophagus and into your stomach, yeah. and the music that was playing was quite incredible. <laughs> This makes sense. <laughs> so hungry. Hungry eyes. Yeah. This completely makes sense. Yeah. Theme song of my stomach. Yeah. Hundred percent. And what? And what were you hungry for? Oh, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Was it this? What is so sweet? Bit of a sweet edge as yeah. well. But then you must have, you must have that day given into that craving, that sweet craving. Because afterwards, this is what was playing in your stomach. <laughs> That's a satisfied tummy right there. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to delve too much into history, but I believe, and we as a team believe, that you've got a bit of IBS happening. So after you had those sweets, and then, you know, you took a trip to the toilet, this is what happened. The theme song. <laughs> How does, it know? How does the inside of my gut need extra motivation? I don't know, mate. Some genuine theme music. Wait, wait for it, though. Look at how happy your gut is after, <laughs> after you passed your airport. That's a very good movement, isn't it? So that's what that is as well. That is my airport. Yeah. I just assumed that I was pregnant. <laughs> In 2024, Jodes, anything's possible. Anyone can do it. Jody and Hazy's Loose Lips. Yes, Loose Lips, Joe, this is the little segment which was originally born to help you um, better absorb information because sometimes your listening skills can be, um, let's just say they're a bit of a work on. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, questionable at best. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, but we've played this for a couple of weeks where I put on the noise cancelling headphones and you deliver a line and then I have to work out what you're saying. Yes, and you magically turn it blue. Yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> and you, you became so obnoxious in this space once again that I was like, well, you have a go, and here we are. Oh, we're going to do a little role reversal. <laughs> we are doing a massive role reversal. So I'm Jody. Yep. I'm doing Jody roll. Okay, you ready? I'll start from here. What's going on? What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being jokes. Right. I'm just being jokes. Yeah, okay. So what we're going to do... Wait, what? <laughs> I'm going to get you to slip on those noise-cancelling headphones. Yes. We're going to put some music in your ears. Okay. Can you hear me? I can't hear anything now except okay. for some delicious elevator music. Okay, mm. that's good. All right. He left me high and dry. Not that easy, I'm is feeling it? feeling high as a kite? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of close. He left me high and dry. It's. A, I know the rhyming word. You left me wanting to die? <laughs> One more. One more. Let's have another go. You ready? Okay. He left me high and dry. He left me wanting to fly high? <laughs> no. Okay, turn off the music. What is it? 
he left me high and dry. Oh, gosh, yeah. thank goodness, because uh, he left me wanting to die. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's that's grim, aggressive feedback. So grim. All okay. right. Okay, none from one. Music on. Hello? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I like to eat your toes. Oh, God. I like you because you're old. <laughs> I like to eat your toes. I like old balls. <laughs> 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 Is that closer? Closer? Give me one more. Give me one more. Give me one more. I can do this. I can do this. Something about old balls. Something about old balls. <laughs> I like to eat your toes. I, I can't say it. Go on. Are you, gonna... Are you saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to eat your scrotum? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it? Okay. I like to eat your toes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Toe scrotum. Oh, no. God. Same thing, but a little bit different. Wow. Just, just a little bit lower. Oh. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse, my right? <sighs> Let the cat out of the bag. Your face is so priceless. Let hmm? the hat go on the bag. <laughs> oh, oh, so think close. About it, think about it. Come on, come on. Let the cat out of the bag. Cat. Let the cat out of the bag. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I done it! Oh, my God! <laughs> Oh, yes, friend. Well done. One from three. That'll do. One from three. I'll take that. Yeah, but also I like to eat your scrotum. (laughs) (laughs) Probably fresher than my toes. (laughs) Hey, how many loves do you reckon you've had in your lifetime? Oh, that's a really, really intense question, isn't it? Mm. Because you don't want to um, offend your partner. No. Oh, I I honestly, I'm not... Maybe... One genuine one. Yeah. It feels like I've only had one genuine love. Yeah, okay. Well, there's some research and also TikTok. Sorry, my exes. <laughs> <laughs> that shows that, in fact, we have three loves in a lifetime. Yeah. There's some science behind this. Different variances of love. Different different forms of love. Do you okay. want me to run through them? Yes, please. All right. Um, this is some random guy from TikTok. I don't even know who he is, but anyway, <laughs> he is the foremost authority on the number of loves that you've had in your life. The first one is the young puppy innocent love, normally in high school, that's bursting with intensity and passion that you only see in the movies. Have a listen. Our first love. This love often happens at a young age. You eventually grow apart. When you grow older, you may look back and think it wasn't love. But the truth, it was. It was love for what you knew love to be. 100% I had that. Did you have high school love? Yeah, you're 12. Yeah? You're 12 altogether for about a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, And you're right, it is intense. Yeah. Because everything's new. Yeah. But she's so, and then 100%, you look back and you're young and stupid. You're like, wow, what's yeah. going on? But at the time, it feels like the person is your whole world, right? 100%. And then when you split up, you're like, I will never get over you <laughs> until someone else catches the corner of your eye. And you're like, yeah, oh well. Yeah, right. And you move on mm. swiftly too, mind and, you. And because you're 17, you're full of ho- hormones. Luke Hay will probably passion a cold baits on camp and you retaliate by hooking up with Campbell Black at schoolies and you won't talk to each other ever again. So who was the first person? <laughs> Oh, that was my first boyfriend. What was his name? Luke Hay. Oh, I thought you said Luke Habel. I'm like, that was my old house, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> did you bash on with Harvey boy? Okay. No, I did not. Okay, you ready for the second love? Yes. Because I think everyone's experienced that first head over heels love. This is your second. Then there's our second love, the hard one. You get hurt in this one. This love teaches us lessons and makes us stronger. This is one where we grow. Now we know the difference between good and bad partners. We now know exactly what we want and what we don't want. Okay, so you experienced that? What do you think? Oh, I mean, hang, hang on, hang on. It was a, it was a joke. Hang oh, on. God. Hang on. Okay. Did you experience a heartbreak in your divorce? <laughs> No, it was completely smooth sailing. No, it was so fun. Said no one ever who's divorced. Let me just say, if it, there wasn't heartbreak, then we'd probably still be together. Right, Am okay. I right? Okay, yes, fair enough. I'm sorry I said that. Sometimes I talk without thinking. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the third love. And this is where things take a nice turn. 
Then there's our third love. This one comes blindly. No warning. You don't go looking for this love. It comes to you. You can put up any wall you want. It'll be broken down. You'll find yourself caring about a person without even trying. You see beauty in their imperfections. You hide nothing from them. You want marriage with them, family with them. You thank the universe for them. You truly love them. That is nice. So I heard this and went, oh my, that is scarily accurate. Yes. Um, welcome to joining the conversation on 13 24 10 if that is how the timeline has played out for you. But I think the key in all this, and I don't want to get too deep with you because I know it's a waste of my time, but you learn so much about through that heartbreak of the second love that goes pear-shaped and you learn to really know yourself so well that by the time that unexpected third love comes along, you're like, I'm ready for I'm it. I'm ready. Mm. So 100%, and that's that's what happened to me. Mm. Because I I thought the biggest difference for me was when you get to a state where you chew and you you want a girlfriend, mm. and that's when you get in a relationship and there's a genuine honeymoon phase, yep. and then it fades, and you're like, well, what's going on here? Yeah. Car, my wife had just come out of a long-term relationship, yeah. so she definitely didn't want to jump straight into a relationship, and I was like, oh, I want to be single. I definitely want to be single. Yeah. And we caught up, and then we caught up again. And then we just kept on catching up and all of a sudden we're in a relationship. Yeah. So it started where it was good and then it went to great instead of starting great and then going to good and going yeah. bad. Yeah. So it's like getting more and more progressive as we go on. The third one doesn't follow the rules, does it? No, not at all. Mm. And it was untimed and all of a sudden. Yeah. And on top of that as well, it was like traditionally what I would tick off as to go for um, was not what Cara was, even though I think she's the most beautiful girl in the world. It's Aww. very, very different. So 100%. It was like it was just... And now I look back and be like, wow, it, maybe that all happened for a, a reason. reason yeah. And for that particular moment. Yeah. The Prince Albert on a Friday night playing a gig. <laughs> it's probably Wonderwall that got her over the line too. Right? <laughs> oh God, it was not. <laughs> Judy's Diary. Dear Diary, well, didn't Hazy have his gun out of its holster to start the week? You just feel like she's ready to go bang, hmm. ray gun style. Pew pew! <laughs> we played Loose Lips, the game where we whack some noise cancelling headphones on one of us, and the other person has to guess what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to eat your scrotum. <laughs> Opposition leader David Spears quit politics. Was it too soon for me to lead the party, or was the party simply not ready for me to lead it? Turns out that was just code four. Was that David Spears pretty much said, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve my best. <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the Liberal Party. Josh Rochelle also fired some shots. Pew, pew. Uh, you can just hear all the court <laughs> fans with their no teeth in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered cheese was a great small talk topic. You just need to know what your cheeses are. Hey, uh, Blinda, what, uh, what's your favourite cheese? <laughs> oh, um, camembert. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know what that is. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? You're <laughs> um, hazy right now and you don't eat cocaine. You don't okay. know what camembert is? No. Is that, are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know my cheese, but apparently I can't focus. Sometimes I'll throw it to Jody because I can't remember what I'm supposed to say, and I'll look at you and your eyes looking in different directions. Like <laughs> you've got that chameleon thing going on, and there's a bit of dribble. Like, well, no help there. <laughs> we chatted about love, more specifically the three stages we go through in life. A great opportunity for Hazy to ask if a divorced woman has ever experienced heartbreak. Then there's our second love, the hard one. You get hurt in this one. This love teaches us lessons and makes us stronger. This is one where we grow. Now we know the difference between good and bad partners. We now know exactly what we want and what we don't want. Okay, so you experienced that? What do you think oh, of hang him? On. <laughs> 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 hang on, hang on. It was a, it was a joke. Oh, God. Okay. Did you experience a heartbreak in your divorce? <laughs> Dodgy tats. Discuss. But totally unrelated to producer Zoe and her new pomegranate. And it's a like an outline drawing of a pomegranate on the back of my left arm. Mm-hmm. That's oh, a bit nice. Isn't that nice? It's lovely, I isn't like it? I like that. I like that too. Mm. 13, 20, 14, let's do this. Crap tattoos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your butt there, Nova Master Jodester? Have you got tattoos on you right now? Or yes. have they since been removed? No, I've got one one that's half removed, but one still very much that exists. Where's your tattoo? Well, 
you'll never know. Oh Jodie has a saying, why would you put a sticker on a Bentley? Oh. Exactly, mate. Well, she did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she put one of those little Nova Automaster stickers on there. <laughs> but the Crab Tat Award went to our favourite bogan abs in the newsroom. The first one that I ever got in Bali. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, she's got a southern cross. A wire around the it's arm. worse than that. Zip laugh one. Do you actually have that? <laughs> you did. I thought there was a piece of. She was like, oh, I actually got that tattoo. You. you. <laughs> I went to Bali and I made a mistake. <laughs> Okay. Where is this? Were you, were you intoxicated at the time? Um, I don't want to dig myself into any more of a hole, so I'm not going to answer that question. Oh, no. <laughs> this story could not get any worse. You've just said I've got a live life love tattoo from Bali. Oh. There's no more depths that you can sink I to. also woke up one day and there was YOLO on my thigh. So. Oh, my. It just gets better and better, doesn't it? Very good, Abby. <laughs> Let's sing to celebrate crappy tats everywhere. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's four for the times you've been faking all rise. Tell you, tell your face, I rest my case. That's why DC is the best. Yep. And when we aren't being chameleons, we're being caterpillars. Sometimes I'm the hungry caterpillar on a Friday night. Yeah. He ate one Me slice too. of pizza and yeah. he was still hungry. hungry. And then he ate 12 beers. Mm, and he was still hungry. <laughs> and then he went, <laughs> <laughs> We discovered we're the most celibate team on radio, you guys. For everyone listening out there who's like, how cool's radio? You have to give up sex to do radio. <laughs> All right, let's round this out for a Tuesdays, Mondays. Fr- oh, God. Please promise us you'll have a fantastic Wednesday. I definitely will. It's Thursday. It's, it's Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> that, was, that was the test. <laughs> oh, I, I did have a lovely Wednesday, yes. Thank you. So do all the hungry caterpillars. Well, beans. Mm. Then he went, wah. <laughs> hungry hazies. I'd like to eat your scrotum. <laughs> and to our boy, Joshy. All the bored <laughs> fans with their no teeth in the background. <laughs> Go off this weekend, kings and queens. All my love, Jody. <laughs> Do you feel, Jodie Oddie, that you go above and beyond in doing almost everything for your beautiful husband, Greg Oddie? I think we're a partnership. Okay. I think we do things equally. And if we really broke it down, he probably does a touch more than I do. Well, there you go. So <laughs> but we have is, different roles. This is Yeah, yeah, 100%. And you yeah. have different times in terms of work and all yes. sorts of things. Yeah. So you've got to chime in together. Yeah. Um, what about if I throw it over to producer Emily? Who sometimes has some very, very interesting slash colourful slash, slash aggressive things to say about Real solid husband. feedback for the lovely Michael and not husband, <laughs> not married yet. Ah, oh, Thank you, Jodie. Oh, Didn't want to have to yeah, well, correct just... you once again. Um, to be fair, Michael has actually had to lift since I've had this job because right. obviously I can't do childcare drop off at 3am. So mm. I'm not going to bag him just yet. She Co- would if she could. A couple of very lucky ladies right here. Mm. That's what I'll say. Um, <laughs> let me introduce you to Paige Turner, who's mm. a social media influencer. What's Paige got to say? She dropped this via TikTok of the things that she will not do for her husband. So here's a list of things that I don't do for my husband. You all know I don't do his laundry. He can do that himself. I do my laundry and we do the kids laundry, but he does his own. I don't cook dinner. He cooks dinner every single night. I do breakfast and lunch for us and our kids. I don't pack him a lunch. If he's hungry, he'll figure out what he's going to eat for lunch the same way that I do. I don't make his doctor's appointments because guess what? He's not making mine. Would it be kind of me to do that? For sure. Is it my job? Absolutely not. I don't schedule his haircuts. I don't pack his clothes for vacation. I don't buy him new underwear when it's got holes in it. If I was to accidentally have a few too many beers on a Friday night <laughs> and stumble home at 1am, mm. do you think Paige would handle it well? No. no. <laughs> not overly well. Can I just, I don't like her aggressive tone and her, it's, it's kind of dripping with, um, I don't know, it's a bit of acidity, isn't it? Like yeah. she's really resentful. I can't believe we're on the same page here. Uh, no, 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 no. I, had, I didn't finish what <laughs> oh, I was sorry, saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I don't disagree with him. Oh, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't. Why can't he do his own mm-hmm. stuff? Yeah, he, he, he oh can. Oh my God, because we're idiots. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Sometimes Cara has to breathe for me. I know, I know, but also that's like you guys do that on purpose. Like I'm so hopeless at the washing, so I'm not going to do it. No, you think no, it's no, an no. act. It's not an act. No, <laughs> it's not an act. <laughs> I weaponized incompetence. <laughs>
Exactly, producer Zoe. My issue here is though, Jones. Well, what is your issue? I've on this got many. Occasion? But this time, so she's not going to do his washing. Yeah. But she, and she's going to do her own, and she's going to do the kids. If she's only got half a load of whites, mm. what she's just not going to do his washing on principle. Fill up the whole load and and save some water, save the environment. Mm. Don't be a mole. Oh. No. <laughs> It's it's about it's about efficiency. Okay. That's Em's motto too, by the way. No, I get that. Don't be mole. It's in her bio on Instagram. <laughs> Don't be mole. I get that, but and that is a little bit vindictive. But I don't disagree with her encouraging him to make his own doctor's appointments and be a big boy and put his big boy pants on and mm. not have his wife do everything. But for also, him. I'm sure she's not out there with the lawnmower. Or why what? not? Well. My my mother in law is seventy two. She mows all the lawns for everyone. Like, yeah, why? but she's she's saying well, I, I'm not going to pack his lunch because he can do that. So she's probably going. Well, I'm not going to mow the lawn. Well, this he is can interesting. So we've got producer M who's uh, for, and we've got Jody Oddy who's against. Paige Turner. <laughs> what I will play for you right now is some live audio of Jody driving her husband Don't. Greg's car this Don't. morning. <laughs> <laughs> if you've just tuned in, there's an almighty scratch on Greg's car. Stop it. So let's just flip this around. Guess what, Greg? You're getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner cooked for you <laughs> for the next couple of weeks. Oh, I hate you. Oh, round two. Here we go. And welcome to the booth, producer Zoe. Good morning. Who are we playing for this morning? Yeah, we've got a couple of callers on that you guys will be playing for. Okay. You've got Hayley. Hazy. Good morning, Hayley. Well Hi, done. Hayley. Hey, Hazy. Hey, Joe. How are you? Great. Thank you. You chose Andrew. That was an interesting selection. <laughs> oh, no. I've got faith in him. He's Aww. got a great voice. He's going to bring it home. Aww. Thank you so much, Hayley. Nice. That's nice. That's and then on Team Joe's, we've got Cassie from Seacliff. Hey, Cass. Woo! Go, yeah. Jody. All right, let's He's do totally this. Got Yes, let's yeah. do it, babe. Hey, also, um, you were second to the party there, Cassie. Would you have always? Would you have also chosen me if you had an option? Um, second is the best. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm setting myself up for a really yeah, yeah. bad life. Aren't I? All right, so this all is right. how it works. Basically, we've uh, orchestralised a song that you would hear on Nova, and we have to jump in with our name as our buzzer. That's right, and, and name the song in the artist. Is that a word too, by the way? Orchestral. It is now. It's, it is. it's a classical Nova hit. Because truthishly, I'm not even sure. <laughs> truthishly. <laughs> All right, should we get in? Let's do it. Hazy go. song okay. number one. Go. Let's go. Okay. Who else is shaking? Here we go. Oh my gosh. Jody. Oh, Jody got in first. Sorry, Jodes, go on. That is uh, that is Ed Sheeran. I haven't thrown up in so long. <laughs> I'm on my way. Uh, too long. It is hazy. Too long. Ed Sheeran. Song name. Castle on the Hill. Because you know what? I did all the hard work for yeah. you. I came up with Ed, I sang half the song, and then you just sweep in at last yeah. minute, Bradbury. I think we were all pretty aware straight away that it was an Ed Sheeran song, but we just <laughs> needed the title. Hey, Hayley, one zip to the good guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. All one right. zip, Hazy, and it's first to two, so Jones, you've got to bring it back. I feel, like, I feel like Queensland sure. in the state of origin. Yeah, and also, you're very judgy this morning. Can I just say that? <laughs> oh, someone's under pressure. <laughs> Hazy, <laughs> song number two. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, hang on, hang on. I think it's coming to me. I think it's coming to me. Um, oh, come on. Oh, Jody. Oh, is it? There's nothing holding me back. No, that no, was last that week. Was last week, you Jody. Absolutely. I'm not recycling my oh, material. Okay. <laughs> okay. How, how much time can I have on this? Come on. No, you, you don't get a chance. And then just there's not much happening right now. I'm just trying to work out. I would have gone. It's, def- it's definitely not Andrea Bocelli, is it? <laughs> can I phone a friend? I reckon you can phone a friend. Okay, I phone Abby. Abby, don't, Abby? don't. Abby, give me, the, give me. Okay, she can give me the artist at least. How do you not know 
play this? I will want you to. Is this allowed? All right. I'm going to get Abby to give you the artist and you can both buzz in with a song okay. now. All right, ready? Go. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Hazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. You're a joke. Jokes, have you You're got a... anything? <laughs> Come on, Jodes. Yeah, I'm calling it. Oh. That's zip to both of you. Oh. It was... What do you... There we go. This song. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> no one has ever heard this song. Oh, is man. this a new song? <laughs> Joe, have you heard this song? Oh my God, this was I... a song that genuinely launched Justin Bieber into a cool yeah. space. Yeah, and you say that regularly, so I'm disappointed. Oh my God, I'm disappointed you know myself. What? I, know it's, I know it's one zip up hazy. We've got one song left. This is going to be the winner. I've okay. called it. No, um, you can't do that. Why not? Yes, you you can. can't do that because it's already one zero. So look, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> So, look, I think I'm just going to go throw this out there and make the rules on right. If it's a draw, then we either split the voucher or they get a voucher each. Okay, all right. You can't fine. just turn okay, up to game fine. three and be like, oh, like, you know what Zoe used to play at school? Oh, last last goal wins. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm up by 10 goals, Zoe. Okay, all right, fine. All right, fire Goodness it up. Song sake. three. Go on, go. Song three. Jody. What? If you gave me a yeah, chance, on, I, need... I would take I'll it. I'll take a name it's or... a shot in the dark. Just... Come on. <laughs> Hazy, can you come in with the win? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Uh, it's Gautier. No, I, know I, know, that. I know what it is now. I will take either a name. Okay, rather be. I'll oh, take it. No, no, I'll no, 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 it. no, 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 no. It's got to be full name and artist. No, it doesn't. Clean Bandit, rather be. Hey, Sam! Oh, <laughs> no, 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 Come over here, Jody. Have a look. Have a look. Have a look. It's not. That is a clean win for Andrew Hayes. Well done. Well and I was saying, what just happened there? I just blacked out for the last 45 <laughs> seconds. Did something amazing happen? I think you might have just oh won the bread God. for Hayley. Congratulations, Hayley. Yay. We did it, baby. Oh, sorry, Cass. Well done, oh, baby. Okay. Nah, good stuff. All right. That's, um, that was intense. Is your heart pounding? Yeah, and I just, I get the, I get the, I get the lyrics and then I can't get the song I name. Why is it so hard? I know. Why is it so hard? I reckon Jodie Warps so you could run in that one. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, somehow, Joey's done something oh, good now. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that Andrew Hayes piggybacking on me? <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm slam dunking right at the end. It's one all two, by the way. We're not keeping score until now. <laughs> <laughs> We're such an open space in terms of feedback within our little team, aren't we? Certainly. And so you can imagine our surprise when our little producer, Zoe, said to us yesterday... Going to get a tattoo today. Oh, of course you are, you little rebel. Which is, <laughs> you little rogue. Which is what most people like to do on a Monday. Yeah. Am I right? I just uh, start the week right. Yeah. Some fresh ink. I mean, I try to get to a Pilates class, but other people like to do things differently. Yeah. Before we get to Zoe's tattoo, you, you've got a tattoo somewhere which you won't reveal. No, well, I... What is it? I have no interest in telling you where my tattoos are. Thanks. What is it? A little Wow Jones type setup? Or what oh, have we got going on? No, it's live, not laugh, really love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, well, who's Wow Jones? Just Google him, see what happens. No, I don't know. Um, all right. A tattoo that I got when I was 21 and highly regret. Oh, okay. And then I started to get it lasered off and it hurt too much. So yeah. I just pulled out and I figured funny. no one's going to see my ass, so whatever. <laughs> Poor, poor Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Zoe, yes. what have you gone and got tatted? Uh, the location and what is it? Has it got meaning? Okay, I've got a few tattoos, yes. but this latest edition Wait, is how many? Eight. Oh, eight. Right. How old are you? 25. Okay. But my, this is my first tat since I was 22. It's been a few years. And I just decided I was ready for another now one. Now that you're much sure. more mature. So true, now that I'm really grown up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're like, oh, rebel. Um, it's a pomegranate. <laughs> 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 Not exactly rebellious. And it's a like a outline drawing of a pomegranate on the back of my left arm. Mm-hmm. Upper arm, above the elbow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm showing you now. Wait, oh, okay. wait. Nice. there's a pomegranate, but there's another section it's of a, the pomegranate. It's a slice. Oh, So slice it's like a full pomegranate with a little slice of pomegranate next to it with a little loose little jewel. Is pomegranate the one with the pips? Yeah. Like the big pips? Yeah. Then, it's like red inside. It, yeah, red with the little, and they're delicious. You put them on salad. It's okay. a hard exterior. Really messy to crack. But really, so this is your personality, hard exterior, no, but really pippy inside, wanna, I, full of pips. No, I actually found it. 
I actually, the reason I got it, and none of my tattoos mean anything, but the reason I got it is because when I was 15, mm. one of my friends said to me, I was a pomegranate, and I found the message that he said it. And he said, pomegranates are really cool, look cool on the outside, they stick out from other fruits, hard to open, but when you finally get it, there's lots of little pomegranate jewels, which are even cooler. That's oh, a bit nice. Isn't that nice? It's lovely, I isn't like it? I like that. I like that too. Mm. 13, 20, 14, let's do this. Crap tattoos. Oh. <laughs> 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 Have you, got a, have you got a crap tattoo that you're ashamed of? And maybe this is completely unrelated to what's just happened on your arm. It hasn't even been 24 hours. <laughs> but you just haven't got around to getting burned off yet. Yeah. To be fair, I do actually have a crap tattoo. Oh, which, which one have you got? I've got, oh, God, do, you want, do I say it? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. You know those little candy love heart lo- lollies yeah. that say, like, be mine or forever yours or whatever? Yeah. I got one of those on my lower hip that oh. says... Not you. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, that's a crap tattoo. Um, that's pretty trash. Well, mm. let's go to the home of crappy tattoos, Abby in the newsroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she the told, queen of crap this, tattoos. This what she, well, she, you said it. I didn't say it. Yeah, she's covered in them. We don't have enough time, unfortunately, to go into my crap tattoos, so maybe let's do it later in the week. Oh. <laughs> let's, okay, let's just do like, never. What, your crappiest one. Yeah. The one that you hate um, the most. <laughs> The first one that I ever got in Bali. Oh, oh no! Gosh. <laughs> I never thought you'd regret that. Oh, she's got a Southern Cross. Oh, it's, worse barbed, barbed the it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Live, laugh, one. <laughs> Do you actually have that? No, you didn't. I thought there was a piece of. I thought someone actually got that tattoo. That 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 you. Did. <laughs> I went to Bali and I made a mistake. <laughs> Okay. Where is it? Were you, were you intoxicated at the time? Um, I don't want to dig myself into any more of a hole, so I'm not going to answer oh that question. God, <laughs> this story could not get any worse. You've just said I've got a live, life, love tattoo from Bali. Oh. There's no more depths that you can sing I to. also woke up one day and there was YOLO on my thigh. So. Oh, my. It just gets better and better, doesn't it? Very good, Miss Abby. Oh, my gosh. Maybe we will find the next candidate for a bit of a Wow Jones type set. No, that's, that, that's the path that we're going down with Newsreader Abbey. You just wouldn't be able Stop to predict Wow Jones in that. Um, all right, let's do this. Grab tats, grab tats. Oh, what you gonna do? Tell us about you so we can laugh at you. 13, 24, 10. Yep. You super crap tat. <laughs> Maybe we were slightly motivated by our young producers, yeah, are we? Feeling no. slightly attacked. No, I like it. I actually think it's super cute. Thank you, Jodie. Okay. Mm, not super crap. Super <laughs> cute. <laughs> cute. Your crap tattoos, <laughs> share them with us. 13, 24, 10. We'll take your calls next. <laughs> Grab tats, grab tats, oh, what you gonna do? Tell us about yours so we can laugh at you. 13, 24, 10, your crap tattoos. Maybe you were motivated by producer Zoe, maybe not. Who's yeah. to say? I mean, it's quite a high bar to jump over. Yeah. She's got live, life, love, and also YOLO on her thigh. That's news read, Abby. Yeah. Mm. So, um, I don't know. If you can beat that, give us a call, 13, 24, 10. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where on your body is it, Abs? We're somewhere where, where you can't see it. Oh, bed uh, it live, life, love. Uh, that's on my, like, hip. Yeah. Okay. And Yolo's on your thigh. Yolo's on my thigh on this side. Mm. I woke up and it was itchy and I was like, why is my leg itchy? And the boy that I was seeing at the time went, do you remember anything about last night? <laughs> Whoa. It's still there. You haven't got a burnt off or No, not yet. I want to, but I'm scared because apparently it hurts. It, it does. does. Hurt. Can, can, can you stop saying you haven't got a burnt off? That's not like, it's laser. Or laser off. <laughs> burnt <laughs> off, laser off, same thing. It's not like someone takes a match to your thigh and I've, burns off YOLO. I've said this before as well. I'm going to get in trouble for this. My wife had her a tattoo oh. lasered off her wrist. <laughs> yeah. It's just one word. What was it? Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably in the car right now. She's going to kill me. Do you think she thought as she was getting that tattooed on her wrist that her <laughs> destiny would be marrying you? I imagine. Oh, That's why she got it burnt off because she's like, oh, God, my destiny was marrying you. <laughs> oh, no. This hasn't panned out. Oh, 13, 24, 10. Good morning to you, Shelley, your crap tat. Good morning. Oh, well, the content wasn't bad, but the execution is another story. It's oh. supposed to be a nice, like, flower anklet chain. And it looks more like not really flowers, these blobs of colour on, uh, you know, like the old barbed wire tattoo that Pamela Anderson has sort of thing. The, the, that's what the foliage looks like. So Who did it though, Shelley? Um, a 
I tattoo parlor down south who I learned later um, the lady wasn't very good. She botched a lot of tattoos, though, and I was too scared to go back and have it touched up because it hurt too much. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've had it for about 25 years, I think. So, yeah, mm. and I, there's so much greenery in it that I don't think I'd be able to have it lasered off. So. Oh, I can imagine it. It's so weathered. I'm but do you, know, do you know what, Shelley? I'm sure it looks absolutely gorgeous. And given you're from Maslin Beach, there's a chance. Uh, <laughs> a lot Shelley. of people have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. Good morning, Stace. What's your crap tattoo? Hi. Um, I don't think it's crap, <laughs> but it is my most random out of my 15 tattoos. Um, it's Bulbasaur from oh. Pokemon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gotta catch and them all. it's not full. <laughs> Oh, so hang on. How big and where? Um, it's on the inner bicep, and it's about the size of my palm. <gasps> oh, whoa! So you've, you've really gone for it with Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. It's actually my favorite. It's actually my favorite tattoo too. Bulbasaur, the Pokemon tattoo on your bicep. Yeah. And is it all <laughs> colourful? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my Go. goodness me! So you're you're proud of it, Stacey. I like it. I love it. It's my favourite tattoo. Okay. Well, that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. That's If you're happy, it gives you confidence. That's all that matters. Do you know what they say, Hazy? And I would recommend to people, if you're thinking about getting a tattoo, take a photo of what you want, put it in your pocket and look at it every day mm. for six months. And if you still want to get it, then go for it. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good point. Zoe um, should have had a pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, good morning, Dylan. Dylan. Hey, how are you guys? Yeah, good, good, mate. Good, okay. What have you got? So, my brother-in-law, and I love saying this because he is actually my mate running a kangaroo um, that is boxed at the Southern Cross on his uh, shoulder. Yes. Because he's an Aussie, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is honestly one of the funniest things. I, I love my tattoos. I've got tattoos, but I've definitely got no regrets like that. So I can tell you now. How big is it and whereabouts is it on his body? Uh, it's just on, it's on his left shoulder, just up. Probably about the size of a fist, so you definitely can't miss it. Um, definitely a nice store when you're at the beach. Uh, yeah. And it's definitely, uh, it's definitely the same. My sister loves using, uh, to let the kids know um, how regret a tattoo would be. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's the example of what not to do. I so, love that. And so, yeah. Dylan, I'm just, at family barbecues, when you take the PI double five out of the tattoo, what's his response? Does yeah. he get defensive or has he conceded that it's a bit bogan? Oh, he definitely can see this bogan, and I think the more and more my sister gets stuck into him over the last, well, at least 10 years about it, yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's just gone up. It was a regret, I know, but at the time I liked it. Yeah. Um, I just love that it's taken your sister 10 years to get the message <laughs> through. He's like, okay, all right. That is good. Uh, oh, I love that from Dylan. Fizzy mm. Fridays, Fizzy Fridays, da, 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 da. Absolutely stunning and brave time of the week, Joes. Mm-hmm. We get to speak to our good mate, Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald. Good morning, Fitzy. Our footy season's nearly over. It's mm-hmm. sad, guys. Yeah. Well, I might, you know, do you want to just maybe just keep texting each other on a Friday? Or uh, mm-hmm. I've, my MySpace page is up again. Do you want to maybe just <laughs> message me through that? I thought you blocked Hazy's number. Oh, yeah, no, it is. I was getting all these prank calls at 2 o'clock in the morning with heavy breathing yeah. down the line, so yeah. I had to block that number. found out it was hazy. I got hold of BJ's number as well, so uh, there's, different, <laughs> there's different avenues. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, it, could it be all over for Port Adelaide tonight, Fitzy, do you think? <sighs> do you know what? The way that you've got to look at it is... Is this going to be Ken Hinckley's last game for Port Adelaide? Whoa. It's, 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 that's the brutal truth, isn't it? It is the brutal truth. And the other thing as well, how much do the team love Ken Hinckley? Because you will find out in the first 10 minutes of the game if they really want to win this thing. Because last week, I don't think we saw any of that, mm. did we, at no. all? Mm. Um, is it, that, that amazing statistic that came out during the week of the teams that have lost by 50 points in a final and then came out the week after and won. Yeah. Did you see that? So 12 teams over the history have been absolutely flogged in a final, but then for some reason they get up the next week after, Jody. It's so I don't know if it's a kick up the bum. Yep. Yeah. That, um, that shows some big kahunas, doesn't it, yeah. to bounce back like that? I know when our ratings go down, <laughs> I just go into a shell and yeah. then uh, they just keep 
they just keep just diving. Well, what you normally do is have the next week off after the ratings go down, and then the ratings go up again. So <laughs> yeah. it swings them around about I know. Can I, can I give you a story about ratings? For anyone out sure. there, radio, we, we, we have them for five – it's a five-week period, and then two weeks later you find out what the ratings are. Mm. And it's uh, it's a – it's a roller coaster. It's volatile. You go up, you go down. But one man, I got into radio. One of the reasons I got into radio was because of Ken Cunningham, right? <laughs> KG. The great KG. Legend yeah. of Adelaide. Mm. He was number one for so long in this town. Mm. And every radio survey, KG would walk around the building here yep. um, in the city around Nova and 5AA and he, Hindmarsh Square. And he would absolutely just be freaking out every survey. And I'd be like, my gosh, that's a legend of this industry. And even he's nervous about survey. Well, you live and die by it, don't you? Like it defines whether you have a job, your salary, yeah. all those sorts of I things. Know. But it's a yeah, roller coaster and you just got to choose not to ride yeah, it. I know. Well, I, I don't know what to take from that, Fitzy, because you're like, KG's stressing out. He's going to go number one. What do we do when we go mid range? <laughs> well, well, come and have a chat to me. I've learned how to deal with that for a very long time. Oh, dear. Oh, Wait. well, as long as you're happy, as long as you enjoy what you do. Yeah, All right, boys. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. No, we're very, very blessed to be in this industry. Um, yeah, so I look, I don't think Port Adelaide will win tonight. I think Hawthorne oh. are playing such good footy. But if it's a close game and they show a bit of fight, could that be enough to save Ken? It's yeah. an interesting one, isn't it? That's an interesting contest. Because if, yeah. if they get smacked, then, yeah, it's yeah. not looking good. Yeah. But, again, still, technically, it's straight sets, and that's two years in a row straight sets. And that's – that's. Yeah. It's, man, let me just um, give you a really precise footy analysis. I know. That's, I know. that's hey, bad. Hey, can I give you a quick story about super fans? Like, who, who would be Port Adelaide's number one fan? Is there someone that dresses up in a, in a lightning strike or – because yeah, you know the Geelong cat? You know that yes. guy that dresses up as a cat at every yep. Geelong game? Yeah. yeah. Did no- you guys hear about the Kansas City Chiefs guy? Oh, no. So he's known as the chiefs holic right? And he dresses up as a wolf. Um, <laughs> and he goes to every game that the Chiefs play in all across America. And I've always thought these people at the start of the year, the booking these flights, accommodation, they get to go to every game. Do they even work? What the yeah. hell? He's just, he's just been arrested. For 11 armed robberies across America. So he's been robbing banks to fund his games at the Kansas City Chiefs. Look up Chiefsaholic. Google that today. And it's an amazing story. He's just got done. That is ridiculous. And makes so much sense when you think about it. Yeah. Hey, um, So he just goes to Chiefs games and then robs banks to fund the next one. (laughs) Makes sense. Um, Fitz, we want to touch quickly on this with you. It was Are You OK Day yesterday. Um, We had a conversation with Hazy, who really opened up about his experiences with some depression and suicide. Um, And the key message from him was you need to talk. And we thought you're so good in this space and you'd be so caring with your mates and getting them to open up and have a conversation if things aren't going well. Yeah, it's it's something that we talk regularly about with my group of friends. And we we grew up in a sort of a a, a tough era and, you know, our parents and especially our grandparents, Scott, I remember, um, you know, talking about this kind of stuff my father found really, really awkward to Mm. do um, and it was a sign of weakness. But um, I think now, especially with sporting clubs and footy clubs, there's a lot of this stuff that goes on. Are you okay day is such a great day because it gives you an opportunity to ask that question to anyone that's close to you. But... um, Take it a little bit further. Like, really just say, look, if there's anything on your mind, just remember I'm here. And the other big one that we've been doing as mates now is telling each other that you love each other. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we always thought that that would be someone that you've met on a date before or been out with for a few months. But, you know, your family is number one. Your friends are number two. They mean so much to you. And you will not – you do not understand how powerful that is to hear from a friend how much you love them. Mm. So, you know, back that up today with are you okay, mate? And then back that up with I love you and you're always here for you. And you are, it is such a powerful thing to do. It will change their life. We um, had a conversation about that because not enough men say I love you to yeah. their mates because they find it's like weird or awkward or whatever. But I just think it's such an important thing for you guys to do because you do. Yeah. your male friendships are the most important thing to you half the time. It is. And even like now, uh, we, you know, we, we've had a few mates that are doing it pretty tough. Um, 
that have sort of uh, come out of marriages and stuff like mm. that to to end it to end a conversation on the phone with love you mate. Mm. I, I had a mate the other day that sort of paused and got a bit emotional over it. You just don't understand how powerful it is, and it's so simple to do. Yeah. So yeah. simple to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really beautiful. Thanks, Fitz. Um, oh. You've got to stop saying it at two a.m. though yeah, and leaving voicemails. Yeah, Hazy, because I up. need to get up. For work in a couple of hours <laughs> after that, you idiot. So I, do you. Which I don't is know the weird. boundaries. I'm not good with the boundaries, so we'll leave you with and this, Fitzy. I'm going to say, I, I love you, and can can I can I kiss you? <laughs> you can, you can. Hey, see, well, you, now you're taking it way too far. But I do love you too. I, was just I love you guys. Yeah, and I'll speak to your prelim final next week. We, we love you too, and I'll say this on behalf of Hazy. We also love your wife. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Can we just celebrate? Can we go back to 2020? And can we get right around the Italian man um, who walked 450 kilometres to cool off after an argument? This is just one of the great movements. 450 kilometres this bloke walks from the north along the coast in Italy after getting into a crawl with his wife. That just... Tells you that that man's going through some stuff. Well, I applaud his initiative and in going, I need to cool down. Mm. But how long did it take him to walk 450 kilometres? Well, that's the whole thing, isn't it? He was averaging um, 60 kilometres a day, mm. and obviously it took him probably weeks and weeks. Yeah, goodness. And it was very much a probably a Forrest Gump situation. That day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. When you need to eat, he ate. Yeah. When you need to sleep, he slept. Yeah. And when you need to do, you know what? He did. You know what? Yeah. That sort of setup. It's so true. Mm. I wonder what the argument was over. It'd have to be something pretty heavy, wouldn't it? Because oh. if I go for a walk around the block, mm. I'm, I'm good by the time I get back. Do you actually do that if you have an argument with Cara? Will mm. you actually go out for a walk? No, not with Cara, but I've been in a really bad headspace. Right. Uh, where I've been very angry. Yes. And I've walked it off before. <laughs> but I've never had to do that with, with my wife. And I've never had to go 450 kilometres. <laughs> I was just picturing your angry walk. Oh, yeah. It's a real storm, stormy. <laughs> your face would because you can't hide it when you're angry. <laughs> your face would be so screwed up. And I reckon, I'm, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but your arms would be straight. Would you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Real straight. Real knocking vases over type situation. <laughs> Can you hear me coming from at least 40, 50 metres away? Kicking a few trees along the way. <laughs> oh, <my> God, yeah. <laughs> Kicking poor little baby trees over. <laughs> Pushing some bins over as well. <laughs> He's 48, this bloke. He explained to the police that he walked the entire way without any transport. Mm. He was picked up because it was during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. So he got fined. Um, 60 kilometres a day wow. he travelled. It's ridiculous. It's extraordinary. I've just worked out what the argument was over. She continued watching a Netflix series when he wasn't up to date. Oh, my gosh. There it is. Every partner has done that to their partner. There it is. And you, you turn on, you're like, hang on, I thought I was an episode and a half behind there. Yeah. She's like, well, I'm on. I'm up to here now. I'm up to so. episode ten, and you. Uh, he's like, well, I'm up to episode six. Next minute, yeah, four and fifty k's later. I did that to Cara with Breaking Bad, and I reckon I got about three seasons ahead of her. <laughs> <laughs> In that space, four hundred and fifty kilometres ahead of her. We've got a new tactic now that if there starts to be some sort of tension in our family, sure, we resolve it. Yeah, by someone having the license to call family hug time. What? So here's the deal. In our family, and yeah. the kid's very much involved. We had to put some uh, pre-rules on it because our little Lottie was really abusing him. <laughs> if you call family hug time, mm. no matter what you're doing, unless you're sleeping, mm. so if Sonny's sleeping, we've all got to come together and we've all got to have a hug. Well, that's cute. And a it bit tends cute. to just sort of ease any tensions away straight away. That's super cute. Lottie was calling it every four to five seconds. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so the new rule was yeah. that you can only call family hug time once an hour. Okay. Yes. That's so cute. So you all just bring it in and have a little hug and it diffuses all the tension. 100%. That's so nice. Because when you're having a family hug, particularly with the kids, yeah. when they're generating it, you can't be angry. Yeah. So it's good. Gets rid of it. We have a rule. We do high lows each and every meal. So we all have to sit at the table and have our dinners together. Mm. But the high low rule got flouted the other day when Harper called it at breakfast. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your high lows? We're like, mate, we just got it's up. The, it's, the, it's the four-year-olds. <laughs> Flaunting the rules. <laughs> I know, will get you. Can we have a new rule in here? It's called a Nova family hug time. Yeah. But specifically, we'll do it Tuesdays at around about <laughs> quarter to eight. Yeah. After someone is super angry after song to song. <laughs> after song, you song. beat me again at song to song. No, no, you beat me, and I needed a Nova family hug time <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I needed to go for a 450 kilometre walk. <laughs>